Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I review fragrances. My name is Giselle. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. And if you are one of my returning subscribers, thank you so much for your loyal support. Guys, today is all about classy and sophisticated fragrances, part one. So if you're interested in learning more about my fragrances, stay tuned. Welcome back and let's get into it. So the first fragrance on my list, guys, is Missia by Chanel and it belongs to the Les Exclusives line. I'm a huge fan of this line. This is a very, very beautiful and a very unique scent. This fragrance has been named after Missia Serd, who was the best friend of Gabrielle Chanel. And she was an artist, actually a pianist, and she introduced her friend, Gabrielle Chanel, to this world. This fragrance has been inspired by the behind the scenes of the theater, actually from the opera, and in particular, inspired by the dressing rooms and all things that surround the theater dynamics, like makeup and flowers. So this is, oh, guys, this is a violet iris rose combo. It also has benzoin, it has tonka, and it also has fruity notes. It has, I don't know if it is peach or nectarine, but it's a fruit from that category. It's not apricots because it doesn't have any tartness. I'm pretty sure it's either peach or nectarine. This is but a very, very powdery scent and it doesn't come as a surprise because having iris and having violet, what can you expect, right? On the other hand, it's also a very leathery fragrance, which is also not a surprise to me because as I explained before in a couple of my videos, Iris can take different directions. It can be waxy, it can be leathery, it can be powdery, it can be creamy when we are talking about Oris, which is the root of the iris. So iris actually is a very versatile note and depending how it is combined, it can take different directions, right? So here is very powdery and it's also a very leathery fragrance. And once again, we have our leather accord, although we don't have leather in the composition. At least there's no leather, no the official side. Let me spray some. It's so gorgeous. So this fragrance is very, very unique. It smells like lipstick in a very expensive leather bag and a compact, and a compact powder makeup case all together. So it is a very strange fragrance, so to speak, but it is very, very beautiful, super elegant, extremely, extremely classic. You can't go wrong with this fragrance. I get tons and tons of compliments. And the thing that I always get also is that, mm, that smells really different. And it, indeed it does. Femini this fragrance for me embodies femininity and sophistication in a bottle. It is very, very beautiful. It's a very complex fragrance. You will get through different stages. And this fragrance takes different directions, actually two different phases. Like the opening, for example, during those first 15, 20, 30 minutes, you will get that lipstick, leathery, powdery type of accords. While in the dry down, you will start smelling the fruit, the fruit I talked about at the beginning. To me, it is you will peach. And you will start smelling that fruit in, in more in the dry down. You can definitely smell the fruit accord in the opening, but it's very, very subdued. It's more like lingering in the background. However, when you transition into the middle notes and then into the bass notes, it's when the fruit will start kicking in and you will end up with a fruity, powdery, but less powdery than in the opening and a very cozy and warm type of scent. This is a warm scent without being spicy. And sometimes that is not that common. Usually warm fragrances tend to be spicy fragrances and we typically see that in oriental fragrances, woody oriental fragrances. But in this case, it's a warm scent. It's very cozy, but it's not spicy at all. And I want to make this clear because there are many people around who don't enjoy spices in fragrances. So yes, this is a fragrance for people who want to step outside of their comfort zone for people who want to try different things, for people who enjoy leather, although there's no leather here, as I said, it has a strong leather accord. You have to enjoy violets and you have to enjoy iris. If you don't enjoy those notes, 
even if you want to be open and step comfort outside zone, of, of your comfort zone, zone you won't like this fragrance but if you like these notes this is a masterpiece in this is a retro slightly vintage type of scent it has a lot of glamour what i always say like an old hollywood glamour this is what this fragrance has it's very very glamorous but with a retro vibe and it's stunning it has a great great sillage and a great lasting power the other day i was wearing misia but after six seven hours i wanted to wear another fragrance and this one was still lingering on my skin so i had to rub it off to be able to wear the other fragrance on top so it has a great lasting power and siage is amazing projection is average but it is a very very glamorous fragrance definitely worth trying but again remember the notes that you have to like in order to like this fragrance try. this is not a safe blind buy in capital letters but definitely 100 worth trying and also you have to enjoy vintage retro type of scents missia by chanel less exclusives so guys the second one on my list is eleganza oops eleganza luminosa by Linari. Linari is a French house. They make amazing fragrances, super high quality perfumes, and they also put a lot of effort, a lot of detail into the packaging. Like in this case, for example, the bottle is French glass. This is real wood and all the golden detail here, as you can see, is 24 karat gold foil. So they put a lot, a lot of detail into the packaging and the fragrance is stunning. It's really, really beautiful. Let me spray some. It's so beautiful, guys. It's a simple. So this fragrance is really simple. It's not groundbreaking. It's nothing that I haven't smelled before. But let me tell you, it's stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. It's a citrusy, floral, woody, musky type of scent. It has a Malfi lemon, which is lemon basically, but it's way more fragrant and juicy. It has orange, it has bergamot, it also has lily, it has iris, so it's also powdery, slightly powdery, slightly, slightly watery as well. Well, it has lily, no wonder. It also has freesia, which is pretty prominent. It has rose and it has patchouli. You will get more of the patchouli and more of the rose in the dry down. It has amazing sillage. The sillage and projection of this fragrance is really out of this world. It's perfect for the day, for the night, for business, for casual, a super, super versatile fragrance. However, I tend to wear this fragrance during the night, and especially during the colder months. However, this is a fragrance you can pull off all year round, and it's a crowd pleaser. I always get compliments when I wear Eleganza Luminosa. The third one on my list is another Chanel fragrance, another one from Chanel is exclusives, and it is Sycamore. By the way, it's Sycamore, not Sycamore. I don't understand why people say Sycamore. I don't know where that comes from, but it's Sycamore. And it's such a beautiful fragrance. I think Sycamore is the best representation of the concept of sophistication, <laughs> if it makes sense. It's the most, most beautiful, sophisticated, classy fragrance you can find in the market when we talk about vetiver this is a vetiver fragrance well it's not the only one i actually have another one which i even like a little bit more which is laurel by parco palladiano and i talked about that fragrance before and i don't want to repeat fragrances when it's not necessary so i chose sycamore because it's actually basically very very similar in terms of elegance and classicism in how beautiful the fragrance is the fragrance has been inspired by chanel's outdoors life when she was a kid so this is a woody earthy fresh herbaceous type of scent it is herbaceous but it's not masculine and this is what i think that sets this fragrance apart usually vetiver is a very it's a typical masculine scent or at least a note that we typically see in fragrances marketed for men right but in this case the vetiver it's not dirty actually it's very clean it's almost crisp it's very translucent it's quite the opposite as what vetiver usually is in fragrances right and that is what makes this fragrance different and it is what makes this fragrance very feminine although it's a vetiver based scent 
Vetiver is the start of this fragrance. So if you don't like Vetiver, stay away from this. Vetiver is a challenging note. It's a note that usually, if you are starting your journey into the fragrance world, 90% of the times people won't like Vetiver at the beginning. It's a note that has to grow on you, like other notes like Oud, for example, or Castorium, or Civet, or there are other notes that are complex and it is common that you don't like at first. But when once it grows on you, well, it doesn't have to, maybe it never grows on you, but if it does, you will love it. And this is what happened to me. I love Years Vetiver. Ago, I couldn't stand Years ago, I couldn't stand Vetiver. I found it very dirty, very earthy, very masculine, and I always loved feminine scents, right? But nowadays, I love Vetiver, especially when they turn so, so feminine on my skin, like this one. Actually, I think this is too delicate for a man. It is a unisex fragrance, definitely. But I think that although this smells amazing on a man, it is way too soft. And I think the skin chemistry on a man can be like too strong for this, meaning that it soaks it up. So the fragrance will be very, very soft and not so noticeable as it is when us women wear it. Of course, it will pull different on different skins, but on men and on women, it definitely smells different. And especially the lasting power is different as well. So I definitely think this leans more feminine and it's a fragrance that blooms even more when it's worn by a lady. I think Guys, the next one is Chypre Fatale by Guerlain and it belongs to the Elixir Chanel line. So this is a Chypre floral, 100% Chypre. As I always explain, Chypre is an olfactory group. I think this olfactory group houses the most amazing and most elegant fragrances you can find. Usually when you find a super duper elegant fragrance, is a chypre, usually a floral chypre or a woody chypre. And this wow. fragrance, it's a starter, guys. It has citruses, it has labdanum, it has oak moss. No surprise, those are typical notes we find in chypre fragrances. It's very, very feminine. It's very dewy, very glamorous. It also has pear, it has white peach, which is sweeter than the yellow counterpart. It's very, very juicy. This fragrance is very dewy and no wonder because it has oak moss, but it also has the white peaches, which not only give sweetness, but also a lot of juiciness. So this is a very, very dewy, juicy type of fragrance. It also has vanilla, it has rose, it has a patchouli, and it's very... Actually, you will smell more of those woody notes, the patchouli and the rose in the dry down. It's slightly incense as well, and although you can get more of the patchouli and the vanilla also in the dry down, you will smell patchouli also in the opening. So you definitely have to enjoy patchouli in fragrances. I think this is a, a perfect fragrance for a night out. It's perfect for the colder months. The colder the weather, the better this performs. It's a super, super classy and elegant fragrance. Very long lasting. It's a class act, let me tell you. Massive compliment getters. It has an amazing sillage. Projection is moderate. It's very clean as well. It's very crisp. This is not the dirty patchouli. This is actually a clean type of patchouli. Also dewy, as I said at the beginning. It leans more on the mature side. It performs amazingly well under cold weather. You can pull this off all year round, but honestly, I think this is a star during the winter. This becomes a star during the colder months. And as I said before, the colder the weather, the better this will perform. So this was Chypre Fatale by Guerlain Elixir Chanel line. Moving on guys, the next one on my list is Ote Rouge by Bulgari. This fragrance is also a class act guys. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous oriental woody fragrance by Olivier Polge. It's sweet, it's musky. Let me spray here. See the mist? This is one of the best atomizers I have ever seen. Uh, I'm always surprised every time I spray this because the droplets are micro, literally. They are micro droplets of fragrance and, it, the, and the angle is very, very wide. So just one spray will cover a pretty large area. And it's a stunning fragrance, guys. It has pink pepper, it has orange, it has rooibos tea, which is also called red tea. It also has yunnan tea. It also has fig. Fig is usually a note that I don't enjoy in fragrances. There are only a few fragrances I have in my collection with fig. Usually when I see fig there, 
I run away. I literally run away. But this is a stunner. Unfortunately, this has been discontinued. Actually, all of the flankers in this T line, the blue, the white, the green, the red are amazing. But the red one by far, in my opinion, is the most glamorous, the most elegant, the most different, right? I love the others, but I think this is the most different by far. It's very, very beautiful, very unique. It also has musk. It's a musky scent, especially in the dry down, and it has walnut in the composition. Walnut is actually the least common of the nuts that you can see as a note in fragrances. The opening is when you smell more of the tea, is when you smell more of the citruses, while the dry down is when you will smell more of the nutty accord coming from the walnut, and it's when this fragrance becomes more musky. However, However this tea, the Yunnan tea and the rooibos tea are the stars of this fragrance, so you will definitely smell tea throughout the entire time this fragrance remains on your skin. It's very unique, as I said, very classy, very elegant, very chic, and it's very linear. This fragrance actually won't change. It will smell the same type of accords. It will keep the same properties. It won't become neither dirty nor scratchy or anything. This fragrance really stays as beautiful as it is in the opening. Beautiful, beautiful, perfect for daytime. It's a very safe fragrance to wear around people. It's a very inoffensive fragrance and you can never go wrong. I think Bulgari has many, many great fragrances that are totally underrated and I don't know why, but I think they deserve some love. And this is by far my favorite, Ote Rouge by Bulgari. My next classy and elegant fragrance is from Sisley and it's Isia La Nuit. I talked about Isia before, and this is like the big sister. It's deeper than the other Isia, which is a very fizzy, very, very beautiful rose fragrance. This is similar, it has Isia DNA, but it's deeper, slightly darker, more mysterious. It's more appropriate for nighttime. It's a stunner, no wonder, it's a Chypre floral. <laughs> Here I am again, very musky, woody. This is very balsamic, very ambery. It also has patchouli, vanilla, labdanum, and ambroxan, which is a note that I love. I think it is responsible for the great projection this fragrance has. Ambroxan is also considered a booster fragrance, so it enhances the note of your favorite fragrance, but also if you layer it with another fragrance, it will help with the projection and the lasting power. This fragrance also has black currant, it has cardamom, although it's not very prominent here, but you can pick some. In cardamom, to me, is one of the most elegant notes you can find in perfumery. It's absolutely stunning. It also has magnolia, one of my favorite flowers. It has rose, it has freesia. And what I like about this fragrance is not just the juice, but also the inspiration for the name, because it's been inspired by a very rare type of rose that was found in the backyard of the founder of Sicily. This fragrance smells oh, such a star. This fragrance smells very European, smells very Parisian. It's very elegant. It has a very European understated luxury type of scent. It's very captivating. It's a crowd pleaser. Sillage is amazing. This is a type of fragrance that you can never go wrong with if you have like a special occasion or whatever, just a night out and you don't really know what to wear and you have this in your collection, you will never, never go wrong with this. Trust me. 100% signature scent worthy. Although to me, this is more like a night type of scent and a signature scent to me should be something that I can also wear during the day. And you can definitely wear this during the day but still to me, it is more a nighttime type of scent. But yeah, definitely signature scent worthy, absolutely. Formal, informal, business, casual, amazing fragrance. Isia La Nuit by Sisley. And the last one for today, guys. Iris Cetre by Prada. And this belongs to the Infusion Diaries line. So this is a floral, musky, woody, slightly incense type of scent. It's absolutely stunning. It's 100% unisex and literally 100% unisex. It leans 50% masculine, 50% feminine. I think this is super, super soft on a man, but still men can pull this off amazingly well. It smells very, I, I think I have space. <laughs> Let me try here. 
I think oh, it's so beautiful. It's very clean, very crisp, slightly soapy, but not because it smells like soap or creamy. No, it's not. This is actually a dry type of scent. It's not, it's not a not soapy this. accord like a Dove soap. For example, this is not. This is super duper clean, crisp, but it's very inoffensive. It's, uh, it's very similar to the original Infusion Diaries, but this is more woody while the original is more floral. Of course, Iris is the star of the fragrance. They are actually equally elegant. I think this is slightly more different. I wore the original, I don't know how many years, and I got bored of it. So I didn't repurchase it yet, but this is a stunner. I love it. I wouldn't say I like it better. It's just different. As I said, the, I got bored of the other one, but this was newer to me. So I prefer to, you know, invest in something new and try different things, but it's, it's beautiful. It is so clean that it's almost cottony. It's very cozy. It's very warm, but not because it has spices. It doesn't have spices at all. This is another case when a fragrance can be warm although it's dry and it doesn't have any spices at all. But it is a cozy scent, perfect for this time of year. This is a fragrance that performs incredibly well under cold weather. The colder, the better. It becomes very crispy, very woody, and super duper musky in the dry down. This is a very quiet fragrance, very inoffensive. You can be totally safe wearing this to the office or to settings where you will be surrounded by people. You won't offend anyone. Conversely, I'm sure you will get compliments. And the magical question, what are you wearing? <laughs> so lasting power is about four hours and projection and sillage are average, I would say for this type of scent. And it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful, safe, inoffensive skin scent. This is Iris Cetre by Prada. So guys, I hope you enjoy this part one of classy and sophisticated fragrances. Please give me thumbs up and leave me a comment below if you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see part two, you know guys that I create content for you. I'm here for you, so your opinion matters and I would love to hear your thoughts about a part two and what are your go-to classy and sophisticated fragrances, especially this time of year. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you next Saturday. Bye-bye.